So it's starting now. Uh, sign in, please. Don't just walk in. Sign in. Uh, okay. Welcome, welcome to the Tenderloin Futures Collaborative. Okay. So we have an agenda, and my name is Michael Nolte. I'm the. Uh, uh, just, I'll be the moderator for this meeting today, and. Um, um, so, first thing. So, the first thing we do is we go around the room and we do introductions. So again, my name is Michael Nolte. I am the. Uh, uh, I have a lot of titles in the neighborhood, but tonight or today, I'm going to be the uh, uh, moderator for this meeting. Uh, uh, on the back, it also points out that I'm affiliated with Alliance for Better District Six, which is another uh, planning organization of stakeholders as well as this group here. Um, so again, I will push everybody that walks in, please sign in and before you sit down. Uh, we're going to do introductions. Yes? Can you speak up, please, Michael? Well, now everybody else is going to be speaking. So introductions. Who are you? Uh, my name is Alex, and uh, I work with the Faithful Fools, and I've lived here in the neighborhood. Uh, currently, I'm living in the Richmond district. Okay. Uh, yeah. and I'm Sam Dennison with Faithful Fools. I live here in the neighborhood. Been here for almost five years. Uh, Joseph Thomas, I'm in the neighborhood, uh, Black Horse Media. Okay, um, uh, Denise? Hi, I'm Denise Dory. I'm a TV producer at Bayback, and I've been in San Francisco and the Bay Area all my life. Susan? Susan Bryan, I live across the street and videoing. Um, uh, Torres? Mike Torres, uh, Tenley Police Station. Thank you. Hi, Bay. Oh, I'm either at 351 Turk Street. Betty Trainer, Friends of Bonecker Park. I'm Alex. I'm Alex Zucker with Forge Land Company. I'm Victor Gonzalez, consulting with uh, Forge Land Company. In the back. I'm Alan Lowe with the South Market. Uh, uh, resident of District 6 for 18 years. All right. Uh, Alexander Goldman, Community Planner with TNDC. My name is Catherine Wolf. I'm president of the Soma Resident Community Association. Uh, and did you sign it? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, next one up. Uh, my name is Scott Emblidge. I'm uh, an attorney interested in land use development issues and low income housing. All right. Next one up. Uh, Jimmy Joyce, uh, 351 Turf Street, Bank Management. Marjorie Bedford, Central City Action. Um, Jeff Bedford, 351 Turf Street, Bank Management. Kathy Cadillac Hotel. Okay, welcome. And MJ Isabel, a 20 year resident of Tenderloin and an at large community organizer. And you got to introduce your dog. Oh, <laughs> since you are indeed, she's my son. Okay, we welcome everybody here and everything. So, please talk. And then, just walk in, please, so we're doing introductions. And then, we're from Faithful Force. And could you take an agenda? Right there. All right. Great. Um, oh, and then, let's question I'm John Nolte. All right. Um, so um, we have on the back uh, the agenda and our ground rules. And uh, I'll read them briefly. Uh, basically, uh, the Turn Life Futures Collaborative has been around since uh, September of uh, 2001. And we, this is a basically a, a stakeholder, one of the stakeholder meetings in uh, the Tenderloin. It's been around for so long. Its mission is to talk about. Uh, issues that concern the Tenderloin neighborhood. We are an information exchange uh, a meeting. In other words, we do not do endorsements. If somebody wants to endorse a project or something like that, that that's being presented, they have to write their own individual letter. So we don't take votes here. It's just to get that off the top. Uh, so this is just to get information. Um, and since it's a public meeting, we welcome them with the media. There's actually several people from the media, and we have uh, people videotaping or can't, I don't even want to do it um, here. Um, as far as the uh, ground rules, uh, every effort is made to observe the posted schedule that's on the agenda. Uh, and uh, um, sir, could you sign in? Sign yeah, absolutely. Form. And uh, uh, please be considerate and respectful of all those attending. Uh, please refrain from cross talks, side conversations while presenting, and uh, other 
speaking um, and try to be concise when asking a question. Um, and wait until the presenter, at this because we're only on one agenda item, please wait until the end of the presentation to ask your questions. Not in the middle, because then we never get to the finish of hearing the whole presentation. Okay, so keep that in mind. We'll, I will interrupt you if you start asking a question. You'll have to write it down if you need to or something. Um, and you need to get an agenda. If you need to it's up there. Um, and so, uh, please remember that. Wait to your wait for your questions after the presentation, um, and we will um, ask everyone will be entitled to ask one question, and then we move on. And if you still have questions, that's fine. Uh, we ask our presenters to stay after the meeting. If you still have many more questions to ask, we have the room after the meeting time, and the, uh, we ask the presenters to stay here. Um, and if you still have a few additional questions. Um, I want to recognize uh, Susan. She's one of our administrative support persons. Susan, raise your hand. And I'm the other administrative support person for this meeting. Um, and uh, we have, a, a, we have a, a group page link, and we're on the internet, and uh, we also have a Facebook page. So, uh, with that, we will now turn the meeting over to um, the people from uh, two, uh, uh, 351 Turk Street Group Housing and 145 uh, Leavenworth Street Group Housing. <coughs> company come up and stand in the middle, um, show your pearly whites, and uh, <laughs> I wish they were real. All right. Um, my name is Victor Gonzalez, uh, working with Forge uh, Land Development Company. I actually am a resident of District 6, it's just on the other side of Market Street, not on this side of Market Street. Uh, lived in the city for 35 years. My kids all grew up here. Uh, my background has been involved in um, about 15 uh, multifamily projects that are around town. Um, and this is unlike all of those. Um, I have one set of uh, uh, plans for each, which I can pass around. But for right now, I'll use them just to illustrate uh, the projects. So we have two uh, surface parking lots currently owned by the YMCA, one at 145 Leavenworth, one at 361 Turk Street. Uh, they're each about eight to 10,000 square feet. They are uh, used for parking uh, for as long as I can remember, 50, 60 years. Um, as far as I know, they're the last remaining um, YMCA uh, properties in the uh, neighborhood. Uh, as a small lot, uh, lots, uh, I should say there are, there's also a connection under the hotel, the Oasis uh, at 351 under a uh, tunnel that actually you can drive through today and uh, access both parking lots. Um, we have a planning commission hearing on the 4th of June. Uh, so we've been working on this for about two years. The uh, idea is that um, we are developing small uh, units. Uh, some people call them micro units. Uh, they're uh, classically under the code called group housing. So we mentioned this the other night. Um, and uh, the major difference uh, between a dwelling unit and a group housing unit is you don't have a full kitchen. But you do have your uh, bathroom, which is a handicapped bathroom. And you do have a what we would call a kitchenette. Um, and then a, um, a, an area for a bed. So it's sort of a smaller studio. Uh, on the Leavenworth side, we have 98 of these units. And on the uh, Turk side, we have 144. And the method of construction and the um, design is different from any other project that's been done in San Francisco. So what you see on the outside and I'll just take um, the um, Leavenworth, is uh, an exterior that is actually the same as the uh, De Young Museum. It's the uh, pebble uh, copper uh, that will be in a design pattern uh, that's not yet shown here. But it will filter the light uh, back to the uh, windows. The actual frontage is entirely 100% glass behind this screen. The basic structure of both projects is steel. 
So it is a steel structure on which panels are inserted into, and those panels make up the units. And I'll try to explain that a little bit more. In, um, in neither project is parking provided, and I should um, back up on that a little bit because there's an easement relationship with the Oasis Hotel uh, for five spaces. So the spaces that will be off of Turk Street are dedicated to the um, Oasis Hotel, none for the project. Um, there will be no uh, subterranean parking or basement as you traditionally would have in a uh, project. Uh, the steel will simply uh, land on concrete uh, footings and go up from there. In, um, in uh, practice, the entire structure is much lighter than a traditional concrete or wood and co uh, drywall building. Uh, a typical unit is made up of uh, eight panels, two panels for each floor, uh, two panels for each wall, and two panels for each ceiling. That ceiling obviously is the floor of the uh, unit above. Each panel is made off-site. Uh, it comes with the plumbing, electrical, cabinets, kitchen already attached. Uh, the toilet is in the wall, uh, so that the method of erection is basically snapping together these partitions. So it is a different type of modular uh, housing than you've seen, or actually anybody's seen, uh, except for the first project uh, we finished in Seattle, 24 units. People were living in it near University of Washington, uh, started moving in about two months ago. That was a prototype after a couple of early prototypes to figure the problems of the system out, and there are always a lot of problems. Uh, we are partnered with uh, Swinerton Construction, who is basically up in Seattle putting this uh, project uh, uh, prototype together, uh, and they will be the uh, construction manager and general contractor on this project as well. The benefits for affordable housing overall <coughs> is that our schedule is about 30% less than a traditional schedule, and we're hoping our costs come down about 40% of traditional construction. The other benefits are much less uh, disturbance uh, to immediate neighbors because the steel goes up, and as you've seen projects around town, steel goes up extremely fast. Once it gets to the site, it erects, it erects, it erects. There, in fact, is no welding. It bolts together. Pretty soon you have the frame. Uh, we need only eight people on site to actually put each building together. One's an electrician, one's a plumber, one's mechanical, and the rest are carpenters, basically. Uh, it will be obviously all union uh, job. The units average 180 to 220 square feet, so they're small. They're, you know, like this, this size. Uh, worked off a corridor, and then there are amenity spaces on different levels throughout the building. So the, uh, I'll pass one to this side and one to that side, and you can take a look at them. Uh, they're fairly similar, uh, although they're on slightly different lots. But I'll give you one for Leavenworth, and this one is for Turk Street. Um, and happy to uh, uh, answer any, any questions. Obvious question is, what do we think it'll rent for? There are market rents. Uh, there are no uh, classic uh, in-lieu BMRs in this below market rate housing. Is, not familiar with the term. And that's because the idea of making small units and group housing units already brings the, uh, the uh, price of them down overall, the construction, the timing, and the rents in, in general. We don't know exactly what they'll rent for. Uh, we think, uh, you know, anywhere from 1,200 to 1,600. There are some lower units that don't have much light, and there are upper units that should be pretty nice. But uh, again, that's a hope. That's what we've underwritten. Uh, it's a gamble as to know whether you actually get those get those rents. Um, so happy Alex is here helping me. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to try. How many stories? Eight. Eighty-four feet. Yeah, I should have mentioned there's retail on the bottom, uh, two thousand to three thousand, depending on on the site. Uh, we don't have a, uh, you know, confirmed use yet for those retail spaces. 
but it gives a street frontage that is open, uh, you know, basically the sidewalk. Sir? Yes, ma'am. I want to know, can it just strip span uh, 5.2? It's not 5.2, it's more like 7.5. I mean, the design standards now are about 7.2, 7.3. Um, there's a mis misnomer uh, in the public that anything is earthquake proof. Nothing is earthquake proof. And the codes are to prevent uh, uh, injury and death, not to save the structures. So any, any structure in that kind of an earthquake is going to show uh, damage. But hopefully, uh, there won't be any fatality. So the answer is yes, yes or no? Uh, has to be okay. at a much higher standard. Than that. I'm sorry. Anything today, anything new, let's just be general. <clears throat> Newly constructed construction, no matter what, has Title 24, which is the state energy code, the state noise control, and it has San Francisco's um, and the International Building Code's uh, requirements for structural uh, integrity. So if you've ever tried to build a project, there, there's a shelf of codes that apply. So your outside is going to be glass. So uh, how is that? Okay. So let me back up. Maybe it was the outside is steel. steel it's a steel right. structure. Within the steel structure are fitted uh, storefront uh, assemblies. Uh, so they're entirely glass. And that's a good example. The glass may break in an earthquake as you know it rotates and turns, but it's not going to um, uh, hurt anybody, if that makes sense. No. No? no? It doesn't. Glass breaks, it's going to hurt. Uh, glass in high rise is uh, tempered. So when it breaks, it breaks into little snowflakes. It doesn't crack. Other glass is laminated. Glass today, uh, you can't buy a single sheet of glass and put it in a new building. When it breaks, it's like a car windshield. It, it, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't shatter. So uh, maybe I didn't answer your question. Well, sorry. Yeah. Um, I run the Cadillac right up the street. And I thought our units were small, but they're about twice and sometimes three times as large as what you're describing. And one of the things I found in running this hotel is that people who are in smaller rooms have a tendency to need to use common rooms. Do you have common rooms for people, like lobbies or places to sit or have meetings or whatever? Yeah. Um, every other floor has a common space. Um, and as you look through the, the plans, and then each has a roof deck on top of the, of, of the building for common area access. So we agree. You, you, you need other spaces beyond just your, your room. Sir? Uh, well, you said you guys used it first in the uh, University of Washington with like 24 units? Yes. So what kind of people do you think are going to be living in the buildings that you uh, well, we would. It's called sort of affordable by design. We 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 don't know exactly. Uh, it would be people who probably work in the area, work nearby, um, people who are here for a shorter period of time before they find a bigger place, uh, people who uh, can live in that kind of environment. So it, it's sort of self-selecting. So in a sense, it's kind of like workforce housing or just transient housing? Is no, I, I think I'd call it workforce housing. Yeah. Sure. If, if you have more money and you can afford $3,000 a month, you're not going to live here. You're, you're going to live there, I, I think. Okay. So go ahead. Sorry. So um, according to the, the packet of information that was submitted to the Planning Commission, um, it says that the the rooms are going to be affordable to people making around 160% of AMI, which is over $120,000 a year. And the rents that you quoted before, 1200 to 1600 that's not a rent that's affordable for $120,000 a year. The rents that are affordable to 120 are more like well over $2,000. So I'm sort of, I just got conflicting information because I didn't include the planning yeah, I package. think when, when and we... Sorry, can I just... And then, you know, the other concern is that I know that there are no affordable units in your building, that because there are no ovens in your building, you all are exempt from the inclusionary ordinance. So I just find it sort of troubling to be moving into the neighborhood 
expecting to be affordable.